Longshore drift is simply the process where beach material is carried along the beach by waves, but it's a really tricky process to explain and show in a diagram within an exam. This video is going to show you how. So here we are at the end of the exam question. We've got our diagram done. There it is. But what are the actual processes? What's going on at one, two, three? Let's find out. So as we've just seen from that diagram, longshore drift is the movement of beach material along a beach by wave action. Here's our beach material. We've got pebbles, we've got rocks, there's some sand, and we're actually on a beach. And here behind me is something you may have already looked at, called a groin. And we know that longshore drift is happening here because this bad boy has been delivered and made here to stop this material from disappearing. And as you can see, this side, which is updrift from where I am, is a lot higher than here. And basically, all this material has moved here from just over in that direction. But how does this actually work? Now, the kite surfers just behind me coming off the beach, they understand about the processes I'm just going to talk about. You probably already looked at waves and the two actions that a wave has. The wave comes onto the shore and the wave comes offshore. The wave coming onto the shore is called a swash. I always remember that because of the sound it makes, swash, swash. The wave off is coming back off the beach and so it's called the backwash. But longshore drift is made in these two simple actions. As you can see from my hair, the prevailing wind today is coming from that direction. So all the waves along this beach behind me are coming from that direction. They come up the beach in that direction. So this piece of material, say if it's a big strong wave, for argument's sake, will end up up here. The backwash though, the direction of that is dictated by gravity. And on this slope you can see me on, gravity acts straight down the slope, which is usually at right, at right angles to the beach. So this piece of material is going to end up down here. As the backwash, water runs down the beach with gravity. Our material is in a slightly different place. The next swash from the prevailing winds is going to move it up a little. The next backwash, because of gravity, goes at right angles down this way. So to recap, eventually, this beach material all around me will travel up that way because the prevailing wind is coming from in that direction. As the swash comes in, it will follow the direction of the prevailing wind. It will pick up beach material, which is anything, sand, these pebbles you can see. And it will rush that beach material, especially if it's a strong swash, and it will wash it this way, away from the camera, closer to up there. This is a slope of the beach, and so gravity pulls the water back down in a straight line. And eventually, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to hit that groin over there. So here we have the start of our diagram, which we saw just a little bit earlier on. I've already started to put on the coastline here. This part's going to be the sea, that's put a big S in there, and this is going to be the beach or the land, so that's put a big B. We also want the direction of the prevailing wind because that affects the swash and that's the direction of the waves. Prevailing wind, I'm going to say, is in this direction. And I would label that up as so. Now we need some beach material, so just hang on. And there's our beach material on the beach. So, as the swash is coming in, it's very much affected by the prevailing wind. And so the waves come onto the beach in this direction. As they do, they pick up some beach material and they move it along and up the beach. Now, because of the angle of the beach, the wave returns because of gravity. So it comes in this direction. And that is called the backwash. And of course, the backwash takes that beach material, or at least some of it, and moves it back out to sea, only to be picked up by another wave swash and taken along the beach. And so that way, beach material is slowly making its way up the beach 
until it hits a barrier. So that's put a big old groin in there to stop it. So that's put all that into a diagram. We need to clearly identify our beach and sea, and it's always easier to do this as a plan diagram. Make sure to get in the prevailing wind direction and put in a swash arrow. Of course, you need to show the process. If you use numbers, that's going to really help you out. One, talk about the swash. Two, talk about the backwash. Three, talk about the process repeating itself. And don't forget to add in somewhere that the bit material is going to move along the beach. Finally, don't forget the direction of longshore drift. And there we have it, our completed diagram. We're going to score maximum marks and we're going to move on confidently to the rest of the question.